In the previous inclusion for this series, I did the happiest albums that I know. And while I stand by all of those choices, the reason why I never did a follow-up to it, that being the happiest albums that you know, is because while I did get a lot of traffic and participation in the comments, what it lacked was there wasn't anything consistent. It was all kind of scattered in terms of what you guys were considering to be the happiest albums. So I really didn't know how to follow up with that video. So to anyone who's a bit disappointed that I never did the happiest albums that you know, I apologize, but I want to continue on with this series and now talk about the angriest albums that I know. Let me start this off with a disclaimer. Again, I'm talking about the angriest albums that I know, and this might come off very similar to what I did a few videos back in this series of the heaviest albums that I know. And I do feel like when an album's being heavy or when an album's trying to be angry, they can sound very similar as when you're trying to portray anger, it showcases aggression, which again sounds similar to an album being heavy. But I do feel like there's a big difference between an album sounding heavy and an album sounding angry. Whereas in the video I did of the heaviest albums that I know, I chose albums from bands such as Tetragrammaside, Swans, and Last Days of Humanity with others. And while yes, they may give off the emotion of anger, I was truly sold on the overall heavy sound that they were giving off, that it really overshadowed any other emotion they were trying to portray. Whereas these albums I'm about to be talking about in this particular video, well, yes, they might sound heavy and aggressive, and you might call them to be very heavy albums, which I understand. It's the emotion, again, of anger that I'm truly hearing that sells me on these albums as to why I consider them to be more angry than anything else that they're giving off. With that all said and addressed, let's finally get into talking about the angriest albums that I know. And like always with this series, I like starting it off with the first band and album that came to mind, that if you were to ask me what is the angriest album that I know, immediately my mind goes towards Kickback with their second full-length album, Forever War. These guys were a French hardcore band that was active from 1991, and I'm pretty sure they're not active anymore as they disbanded roughly around a decade or so ago. But Kickback were a very infamous hardcore band, mainly because their infamy grew at live shows. They would try to rile up the crowd so much that they were basically causing fist fights in the, front, in the audience from the band that it would just create a very hectic and violent environment if you were to ever catch one of their shows. And from my understanding as to why they did this, is it was a reflection of all of the French extremist films that were coming out around the same time in the early to mid 90s and they wanted to bring that form of extremism from cinema onto now live show performances basically. As for the music for Kickback, again they're a hardcore band and there's nothing fancy, flashy, or technical going on here. It's extremely blunt and simplistic from the drums, bass, and guitar. It's just straightforward aggression and the, again this just pissed off nature. How everything just feels like it's trying to beat you over the head senseless. But it's really the vocals that sell me on the angry pissed off nature that Kickback just does so well. It's the way this guy has like these wailing out of control vocals that um, I would never want to get in an argument with this guy because he just sounds so intimidating how just out of control and savage his performance is that, I don't know, when I listen to Kickback, I just feel like I'm getting angry for no reason other than it radiates just so much anger that I feel like it rubs off on me in some way. And I've always considered them to be the angriest uh, band and album that I know of. And one thing you're going to notice as we progress on in this video is, as much as I enjoy extreme metal, the one form of music that I really feel like sells me on the emotional aspect of things, at least in terms of uh, more upbeat and aggressive music, is more of the like hardcore and punk bands. That uh, half of this video includes punk bands, and you're going to notice that as this is a pattern going on with this video. 
because next up is discharge. Hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing. The godfathers of crust punk, I felt like I had to, by default, include them. Mainly because for their time, which I believe this album was released in 1981, what Discharge basically said to the world was, hey, it's okay to make obnoxiously pissed off music. So much so that Discharge influenced more music scenes than I really could have ever thought of until I did research on it. I know they influenced a lot of the first wave black metal bands, like Hellhammer was greatly influenced by Discharge. A lot of the early material by Mayhem was, like Death Crush. A lot of the early grindcore bands were influenced by Discharge. Essentially, the whole Japanese hardcore punk scene was influenced by them. And basically, every crust punk band that's ever existed has been influenced by Discharge. I really do feel like they are one of the most important bands when it comes to the idea of wondering where like angry, aggressive, pissed off music really stems from. From the abrasive and vicious guitar riffs, D-beats from the percussions that will just pumble you throughout the whole album, and again those obnoxious vocals that he will just shout out from beginning to end on the album from the verses and choruses, it laid out the blueprints for what just mad music can sound like, I do feel like that they are very substantial overall in terms of influence and I feel like for anyone who wants to get into crust punk especially listen to Discharge and if you don't know them and you just want to hear angry music it doesn't get any better than early Discharge. His hero is gone. 15 counts of arson. This was a very short-lived hardcore crust punk band based out of Memphis, Tennessee and they are big innovators to that of this niche little subgenre known as Neo Cross. And if you're wondering what that is, it's essentially a branch off of Cross Punk that it expands the sound of Cross Punk a bit more as there's a lot more of an inclusion of sludge metal in the songwriting and has more of these somber atmospheric approaches with how they uh, play out Cross Punk. Thus, I would feel like it showcases to most people that crust punk is a little bit more than just, you know, shouting and deep beat drumming going on for like 30 minutes. However, the reason why I included the His Hero Is Gone into this video is, as cliche as this is to say, I feel like what they're trying to portray here with this album and how their uh, songwriting goes is what just arson would sound like musically and sonically. Um, it's just very violent how everything's being played out. The shouting and screaming by the vocalists make it all the more hectic and, again, angry sounding as most of uh, everything else I've talked about in this video has done thus far. And I feel like with these somber and kind of like slower sludging moments that happen in the album, it expands the dynamics and it makes the hectic parts feel all the more emotive and real and... I don't know, it just gives more substance to it and the dynamics are just stretched out a bit more. And I would just say overall, if you want to get into hardcore punk, His Hero Is Gone is a great place to start. And if you want to understand what Neo Crust is as a whole, this is one of, if not the best album to get your feet wet with this very niche little subgenre. Hell Nation, Cheerleaders for Imperialism. This album is only roughly around 18 minutes long, if I'm not mistaken. And a lot of these tracks are roughly around the length of like 30 seconds to 45 seconds at most, but goddamn, this is such a rager from start to finish. With a mixture of power violence, grindcore, and thrashcore to an extent, it will just derail you on just the sheer chaos of everything happening. The drumming on this album, good fucking lord. If, you, if that doesn't portray anger from just the drumming alone, I don't know what will. Because the way he just slams on these percussions, you would think he's trying to just basically destroy his drum set, how the drumming comes off. The vocals with just this screaming that just does not let up. This album will not let you recollect yourself at all. It wants to let you know that they're angry, pissed off, and just fed up with everything, having again this very strong anarcho-punk type of vibe and overall sound with the lyrical content, 
that if you ever want an album that you just want to feel fed up with the world, I don't know what it is, but Hell Nation's cheerleaders for imperialism always gives me that vibe. Nails, you will never be one of us. I'm aware that this is extremely cliche to include these guys in this video, but I felt like I just had to, mainly because ever since I've known about Nails, roughly around the time I was just getting out of high school when they were building up more traction with the following, they've always just said to me from their presentation, album artwork, band photos, execution, and overall sound of how they play around with power violence, grindcore, and hardcore, and a lot of other like subgenres similar to it, is we are angry. I'm very pissed off. I have a strong distaste for everything. Everything about these guys is just, we are angry. And I just felt like because of that simplicity, I just had to include them. Even if this is extremely cliche, Nails is another band that just embodies anger, hatred, disgust, and every negative emotion similar to anger in every which way possible. Panic DHH. Panic Drives Human Herds is what DHH stands for, was this kind of like experimental industrial hardcore punk band that was very short-lived but also very unappreciated as I don't really think I've ever seen anyone ever talk about these guys. And I would say if you want a good representation of what the fusion of industrial and hardcore punk would sound like, listen to these guys immediately as it seems like only people know of either stuff like Ministry or Skinny Puppy or like the closest things to it. But the reason why I'm going to include Panic DHH in this video is they, this album especially at least reminds me of Nine Inch Nails, The Downward Spiral, but everything is meaner, harsher, and more cataclysmic sounding. That has just a strong disgust for just everything going on in this world, especially that... I don't know, there's something just so cold and vile from the instrumentation. It always sounds like all these industrial elements are used more as like a weapon to showcase just how fed up they are with everything. That I feel like it's a great inclusion for just, again, an angry album to listen to if you want to add that to your playlist for whatever reason. But yeah, again, as I stated, if you want to get into industrial hardcore punk, and again, you want a good representation of that mixture, strongly recommend listening to this album by Panic DHH. Today is the day, sadness will prevail. At first glance you would think this is a very depressing album from the album artwork and album title, but actually it's one of the most miserable sounding albums I've ever heard, mainly because from the synopsis I've read about this album is the vocalist was trapped in his house with his family during a snowstorm and being isolated in one place for so long influenced him to make an album like this along with the fact too that he was not using phones anymore uh, in terms of communicating with people and only used email when it came to uh, contacting individuals thus you really have this very just pulverizing album in terms of how it's trying to portray isolation in the most punishing of ways possible. Because as I stated, this album runs for nearly two and a half hours long. And with this mixture of noise rock and a lot of experimentation on the metal aspect of it, it makes for a very unique album to showcase anger, I feel like. And what it's trying to portray, at least from my understanding musically, is isolation deteriorating someone's mind so much that they're essentially having like this mental breakdown of just anger but again it's going for just hours on end so even though this album is very long and i would say it would take multiple listens just to get through with it from start to finish as it is a double album overall uh, if you want a really unique and creative way of experiencing misery, as weird as that sounds, I would recommend this album overall. Tamar, Triumph Through Spears of Sacrilege. I'm kind of cheating here, as this is essentially a demo, and usually I talk about full-length albums, but I had to include it. Even though I did a video all about this band with this one particular demo that they did, 
it's like the most angry and pissed off extreme metal album I've ever heard. Because I know it's in the realms of like this Bastille war metal of a mixture of black metal, death metal, thrash metal, all the extreme metal genres just blended together. And I still state this, as I said in the video I did for Damar, is while there's a lot of war metal bands that are overly aggressive and over the top with how their presentation is of just like this very militant, satanic uh, type of vibe that they give off, it's always done in like this flexing type of attitude of I hate God and being evil is awesome. It's essentially what a lot of war metal bands give off with their overall presentation. Damar is the only one to this day still that I've heard that it's in the realms of war metal, but it sounds genuine. Mainly because they grew up in Lebanon, and from 2006 when this uh, EP or demo, I should say, was released, to when they grew up, which I'm assuming they were alive around like the 90s and the 2000s, they grew up in an environment just fueled to the brim with war nonstop. And I feel like with this consistent fighting of an environment that they were surrounded with, it just enraged them so much to make a genuine hate-fueled war metal album, uh, demo, I know I keep saying album, demo, from start to finish that I, I can't help it, I need to include this. It truly is one of the most genuine, hateful, angry musical releases I've ever heard in extreme metal to this day. Leviathan. Tentacles of Horror. This is one of the big dogs when it comes to depressing suicidal black metal in terms of at least the emotional aspect, but mainly Jeff is known with Leviathan for blending black metal and a lot of ambience together. And I've talked about Leviathan before on uh, this series with the most depressing albums that you know, a lot of you guys brought up. The tenth sub-level of Suicide is one of the most depressing albums which I believe it is, uh, mainly because Jeff is so unapologetic with his overall emotions that he tries to portray onto Leviathan. And 10th Sublevel of Suicide, I would definitely say, is one of the most depressing and miserable sounding albums, but it's all of Jeff's emotions in terms of the kind of like internal affairs that he has to do with like suicide and self-loathing, whereas Tentacles of Horror is all of that misery and hatred, but now he's kind of like lashing out as it feels more external now with his emotional affairs. Because I would say Tentacles of Horror is one of the most miserable and angriest black metal albums I've ever heard, because again, Jeff is just so good at portraying his emotions just so unapologetically, and I feel like it's that is to why he's had just such this die-hard cult-like fan base throughout the years, and I've always found Tentacles of Horror to be my personal favorite by Leviathan, mainly because it's just so angry and aggressive and pissed off in every which way, from the guitarist, the ambience, the atmosphere, his vocal performance, the drumming especially, everything just radiates misery, anger to the fullest. Kanye West, Jesus. Now, I know this is dramatically different from everything else I've talked about thus far, but there's a reason why I'm including this, mainly because of all the different layers of context as to why a lot of people consider this to be Kanye West's angriest album he ever did. For starters, this album came out in 2013, which was roughly around the time Kanye West was starting to dive in more into the fashion world with his brand. He felt as if he was getting kind of like shunned away and pushed to the side as a lot of the fashion world from his point of view had a lot of this like Eurocentric ethnicity kind of like scattered throughout it. Thus he felt as if he was dealing with a lot to do with racism as a boundary for his brand. Hence why one of the songs called New Slaves is a big criticization of what he was dealing with uh, in terms of racism with the fashion world, having to call out a lot of the individuals that he would bump shoulder to shoulders with, a lot of black stereotypes, and essentially deconstructing all of it and showcasing his frustration and anger with all of it. As for Kanye himself, as I'm sure some of you guys were aware of, he's pretty egotistical around the 2010s for him, you know, as most of you know of him. 
And a lot of people would criticize him for that, which granted I try, at least now looking back at it, to be kind of understandable as a lot of musicians, whether they be like this underground status to this small cult-like following to Kanye West's status of uh, basically a celebrity that he was during that time, is everyone has like a bit of an ego attached with them to some degree. And Kanye made it just very obviously known that he did as he would mainly talk about himself and hype himself up a lot. And with Yeezus, I feel like with all the experimentation of it being very abrasive and noisy with the percussions and overall production value, and having all of like these weird kind of like transitions from that would be scattered from all different albums that he did, he got a lot of like mixed reactions from the fans and critics as some people loved it and some people hated it. Um, you know, you read all these interviews and um, reviews on the album. And it seems like, you know, either you're going to get someone who absolutely hated the shit out of it and thinks it's one of the worst things, and others thinking that it's way ahead of its time and it's the greatest thing ever. And I feel like what Kanye's overall um, mindset was at the time, which I know this is quite difficult to dissect, is he wanted to showcase to a lot of people that he wasn't this one-trick pony, you haven't figured him out yet. And so, like, this big middle finger to the masses that there's a lot more ambition to him. He's not just all talk and no walk. And this music uh, album showcases that there's so much more ambitions to his creativity. And there's a lot of different ways to view this album, at least in terms of the lyrical aspects. I've even seen uh, videos of people saying that it's actually a concept album, as Yeezus is this kind of like um, person that Kanye West is trying to portray in like this... Uh, concept album as uh, this rise and fall of this character that Kanye's trying to do. Um, there's all different ways of looking at this album, I guess. And I feel like it showcases a lot of ambition, but it's all done in terms of like this hate uh, towards like his audience and the masses thinking that he's just like done. He's this one trick pony. There's not much to his ambitions and this is just like all to stir up the pot. I feel like the anger is really showcased here by um, Kanye just showcasing that um, the masses just haven't figured him out yet. And I feel like it's because of that ambition all these years later. I'm noticing more people are tending to admire this album more and more as the years go on. I know in recent times Kanye has become this extremely controversial individual and he's kind of had like this rise and fall uh, essentially in terms of his popularity and relevancy in the uh, music world and it's kind of weird how looking back on this album and realizing the concept that it's trying to portray a lot of people think this was kind of like Kanye's like future of his rise and downfall in terms of stardom and dealing with these inner demons that he had I don't know it's just a really interesting album overall musically and conceptually but there is a lot of anger being showcased throughout it, whether it be the production, songwriting, and lyrical content. It's just this very monumentally creative, ambitious, and pissed off album. And I felt like I just had to include it. And the final inclusion will be Maniac Street Preacher, The Holy Bible. This is a kind of like alternative rock, post-punk, and even considered to be by some as a glam punk album. And I wanted to include this album particularly mainly because with every album I've talked about thus far besides like the Kanye West's um, Yeezy album, anger is kind of being portrayed in terms of just like shouting and aggression and just being loud. Which yeah, when you're angry in any aspect, I feel like a lot of people do that. But this particular album showcases anger in a different form and I feel like it's important to bring that out here with Maniac Street Preachers, The Holy Bible. Because as I stated, it's a mixture of alternative rock, post-punk, and again, glam punk, that is kind of easier on the ears and it's not that abrasive, it's not really that upbeat and fast or that aggressive, but really what makes this album at least angry to my ears is the lyrical content. The lyrical content on this album has to do with consumerism, imperialism, fascism, suicide, freedom of speech, prostitution, violence, and PC culture. 
all of which are either touchy or extreme subject matters and essentially just criticizes all of it and while you're paying attention to all the harmonizing melodies and really catchy tunes of these really easy to digest uh, genres of music again the lyrical content you're going to notice really quickly when you pay attention to it is really just genuinely pissed off and it kind of feels like a big contrast from all of like the upbeat music you're hearing. So all I can say is if you listen to this album, it's written very well, but pay attention to the lyrics and you'll understand as to why I'm including it in this video. And that'll do it for this video, guys. Like always, links provided to everything I talked about will be in the description below. I didn't state it before, but I'll state it here. Really curious to know what are some of the angriest albums that you know. And if there's as much participation as there was in previous videos, then yes, I'll try my best to do a follow-up with this video of the angriest albums that you know. And yeah, guys, other than that, like always, make sure you guys drink plenty of water to stay hydrated and have a great day.